The Sunshine Serial presents The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. <laughs> Today, Superman, mighty man of steel, sets out to perform a miracle in an effort to snatch from the jaws of death the life of Danny O'Neill, youthful victim of the forces of intolerance. Say, Rusty, did you know my cousin Doris is sick in bed? Hey, that's a shame. Well, she's just got a cold and won't be out for a few days, but I've been trying to figure out something to get her to play with to help pass the time. Oh, yeah, that's a swell idea. Let's see, yeah. Say, I've got it. Buttons. Buttons? Sure, Doris is collecting that new second series of comic buttons from packages of Kellogg's Pep, same as we all are. We'll send her some more. Yeah, Rusty, but, but well, I don't we'll see... take up a collection. Every kid can give up a duplicate button. But you kids have been swapping duplicates to get more for your own collection. Well, it won't hurt any of us to give up one apiece for Doris while she's sick. Well, how are you going to know which comic buttons Doris needs? Oh, you find out from her mother. This will be a surprise. But I know for sure she needs a Superman, and I've got an extra one. I'll start it off with that. Hey, that's mighty swell, Rusty. Mighty thoughtful and generous, too. Because any fellow or girl, any time, is doggone glad to add more of these new second series comic buttons to their collection. They're so smart-looking, really on the beam. Why, those pictures of your favorite comic strip characters look so real they can almost talk. It's a load of fun swapping duplicates with your friends, too. And are these buttons easy to get? You don't send in a single penny, not even a box stop. You just ask Mom to get you plenty of Kellogg's Pep. Inside every package you open, there's your thrilling prize. Remember, that's P-E-P, Pep, the sunshine cereal made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. And now, the adventures of Superman. Convinced that the city of Metropolis is about to be swept by a wave of terror growing out of an organized attempt to promote religious and racial prejudice, Superman, in his guise of Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter, has called a special night meeting in the office of editor Perry White at the Daily Planet. It is a little after nine when Kent, hurrying through the now-deserted city room, opens the door of White's office to find Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen, and the gray-haired editor waiting for him. Well, I must have. you were never coming. I'm sorry I'm late, but I couldn't help All you. right, all right. Never mind the excuses. What's this all about, Kent? Well, mind if I catch my breath, Chief? Well, catch something else. If this isn't important, I had a day tonight, but Jimmy it's said that you... It's important, Lois. Very important. Last night, as you know, seven stores on Morton Street were burned down. The fire was started by two boys, one of whom has been identified. Where did that information come from? A young friend of Jimmy's, a boy named Danny O'Neill, who happened to see the two kids break the window of Dave Hoffman's drugstore and start the fire. He recognized one of them, a kid known as Muggs. Why didn't he go to the police? Wait a minute, Lois. Danny was afraid to go to the police because, as he said, Muggs was a tough kid, and, well, if he found out Danny had snitched, he'd beat him up. Good heavens! When Danny got home this evening, Muggs and another boy were waiting for him in the hallway of his tenement house. They beat him up so badly that he's now in the Metropolis Hospital, hovering between life and death. Oh, and you're not no. serious. Dead serious, Chief. You mean to tell Wait me that... that you haven't heard anything yet. Jimmy and I were at the hospital. It was about eight, wasn't it, Jim? Yeah, just about. Did you see the boy? Just for a moment or two. But we met his priest, Father Sheehan from St. Mary's. Well, I know Father Sheehan. Well, he told us what was behind the Morton Street fire, Danny O'Neill's beating, and whatever may follow. What do you mean, Clark? Well, here it is in a nutshell. About a month ago, Father Sheehan, Rabbi Stone, the Reverend Dr. Leeds of the Congregational Church, and three laymen formed a committee to raise money to, to build a gymnasium and playground for youngsters of the neighborhood. Yes? They were going to call it Unity House and open its doors to every youngster in the neighborhood, regardless of race or religion. Mm, darn good idea. And that's what they thought. But the minute it was announced, they all received threatening letters, warning them to give up the idea if they wanted to stay healthy. Who wrote the letters? Oh, they were anonymous, but... They evidently came from hate mongers. Father Sheehan believes it's an organization attempting to stir up trouble between different races and religions. Well, that wouldn't surprise me one bit. What's this all got to do with the Morton Street fire? Yes, you said two boys were responsible for the fire. Well, Muggs and his companion did the actual damage, but there was someone behind them, whoever wrote the threatening letters. And unless we take action, this thing's going to spread. Dave Hoffman was the first, but 
He won't be the last. The only action to take is to have the police pick up those two hoodlums. No, Chief. No, no. I had a long talk with Inspector Henderson. If the police arrest Muggs and the other boy, whoever's behind them will run for cover. No, what we've got to do is use Muggs to get to the higher-ups. Henderson has agreed to lay off long enough to test my plan. And what's your plan? Well, it depends on Jim. What? On me? Yes. You see, my idea is to have Jim pose as a tough little hoodlum, scrape up an acquaintance with Muggs, and get into his gang. Are you mad, Are you crazy, Clark? Kent? How do you feel about it, Jim? Well, gosh, I don't know. Why, it's ridiculous. Why, Jimmy is just a boy, Why, won't permit it, No, Kent. wait just a minute. To begin with, you both seem to forget that Jim doesn't run copy anymore. He's a reporter, and he's grown up. In addition, he'll have plenty of protection. Police protection? No. The protection of Superman. Superman? That's right. What are you trying to pull, Ken? Not a thing, Chief. I've already contacted Superman, and he's more than anxious to help. Well, if that's the case, I why... still don't think Jimmy should be exposed to any danger, uh, Could Chief. I say something, please? Sure, go ahead, Jim. Well, I just want to say that even if Superman wasn't going to help us, if Mr. Kent said it was all right for me to do it, I'd do it. Good boy, Jim. Clark, I think you're making a big mistake. Why, if anything happens to Jimmy, you'll be the sorriest hey, man I ever... Hold it. Hello? Who? Yes, yes, he's here. Just a minute. Uh, for you, Ken. Oh, thanks. Hello? Oh, yes, Father. Father Sheehan, it's about Danny. What was that? Yes? Yes? When did it happen? Oh, he's dead. Danny's dead. I see. Wait a minute, Jimmy. And he's the only one, eh? Jimmy, just a minute. Uh-huh. Jimmy, just a minute. Yes, yes, I understand. Well, I'm not so sure of that, Father. We may be able to do something. Will you stand by at the hospital? I'll be in touch with you. Right. Goodbye. What is it, Clark? It, it's about Danny. Yes, he's... He's taken a bad turn. Can't they do anything for him? Evidently not. He needs a delicate brain operation, and there's only one surgeon in the country who can do it. Well, what are they waiting for? Get him. I've got $100 saved up, Mr. King. Oh, it's not a matter of money, Jim. It's a matter of time and distance. The surgeon they need lives in Chicago, and unless Danny's operated on within... Well, at the outside, two hours. It's worth the chance. What's worth the chance? Nothing. Who are you calling, Ken? Huh? Oh, the, the hospital. Well, you just said just you... Just a minute, please. Hello, Metropolis Hospital? It's urgent that I speak with Father Sheehan immediately. Well, I think you'll find him somewhere on the fifth floor. That's right. Uh, and tell him Clark Kent is calling, will you? Thank you. Oh, what are you going to do, Mr. Kent? Save Danny's life if I can, Jim. But, Clark, if the surgeon is in Chicago and the operation must be performed within two Hello? hours, I don't... Father Sheehan? Uh, Clark Kent. Yes, look, can you give me the full name of that Chicago surgeon? Well, get me his address, too, if you can. I'll hold on. Sorry, what were you saying, Lois? I was just saying that if the operation has to be performed within two hours, what's the use of even bothering Excuse you? Excuse me. Hello? Yes? Dr. Ernest C. Henley. Uh-huh. That's C as in Charles... Right. H-E-N-L-E-Y. Uh, you, you, you can't get the address? All right, well, never mind. Now, 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 look, Father. It's 9.15 now. You tell him to get Danny up to the operating room and have him ready. Dr. Henley will be at that hospital before 11. Miles agape, Perry White, Lois Lane, and Jimmy Olsen listen as Clark Kent promises to transport a famous Chicago brain surgeon a thousand miles in less than two hours. We know, of course, that he intends taking action as Superman. But even Superman may fail this time. We'll know more in a moment when we return for the tense and exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. You know, gang, there aren't many prizes or such dandy prizes that you can get as easy as those new second series comic buttons that now come in packages of Kellogg's Pet. Why, you don't have to spend a single penny of your allowance, and yet you can have the fun of collecting 18 different buttons, each one with a true-to-life picture of one of your favorite comic strip characters. It's no end of fun to add to your collection every time Mom opens a new package of pet. Fun to swap duplicates with your pals, too. And mighty exciting to wear all your buttons pinned on your jacket or dress or cap so everybody can see how many you've collected. And did I say these new second series comic buttons are easy to get? Why, you don't send in any money, not even a box stop. All you do is to ask Mom to get you some Kellogg's Pet. Then look inside the package for your prize. Get your comic buttons, gang, from P-E-P Pep, the sunshine cereal made by Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. <laughs> Now, 
back to the adventures of Superman. With only a brief two hours in which to save young Danny O'Neill's life, Clark Kent and his true identity of Superman has streaked from Metropolis to Chicago, a distance of a thousand miles, in search of Dr. Ernest Henley, a famous brain surgeon. We join him now as once more in the garb of the mild-mannered, bespectacled newspaper reporter. He has tracked him to a medical meeting. We have discovered that a cancerous agent, which we call a milk factor, can be transmitted. We definitely believe that milk... Now, uh, what can I do for you, young man? I understand Dr. Ernest Henley is at this meeting. It's urgent. I'm sorry. I... Dr. Henley opened the meeting and left. That was about 8.30. Oh, Lord. Have you any idea where he went? Why, no. No, no, wait, wait. Uh, he did say something about joining his wife at the theater. They had tickets for a play. What theater, you know? I'm afraid I don't know. Well, how many theaters are there in Chicago? Well, now, let me see. There's a uh, Siddick, the Blackstone, uh, Great Northern, uh, the Schubert, the Studebaker. Can you tell me whether Dr. Ernest C. Henley is in this theater? Henley? Yes, just a moment. Baker, Gray, Brian, Richards. Sorry, if he is, he didn't leave his name at the box office. Dr. Ernest C. Henley. Miller, Levine, Roberts, Dunn, sorry. Dr. Ernest C. Henley, please. Jeffrey, Carson, Cohen, sorry. Dr. Ernest C. Henley. Sorry. Dr. Ernest C. Henley. Sorry. Dr. Ernest C. Henley. Dr. Ernest C. Henley. Respiration, 22. Pulse, 86. More oxygen. Doctor, isn't there anything we can do for the boy? I'm afraid not, Miss. What about that telephone call Father Sheen got from the newspaper reporter? That Henley would be here by 11? Yes. The man's crazy. I knew it was stupid when we moved the boy up here to the operating room. It's a quarter to 11 now. Henley's a thousand miles away. And this youngster's life is ebbing out each time the clock ticks. Evidently, Superman has failed to locate the Chicago brain surgeon. The one man in the country whose skilled fingers may save young Danny O'Neill's life. And with that failure, the entire plan to ferret out the breeders of hate responsible for Danny's condition will collapse like a house of cards. For if the little newsboy dies... The rats will run for cover. Don't miss tomorrow's tense, exciting episode entitled The Fight for Life. Be sure to follow Superman's greatest battle, the battle against hate and intolerance. So join with him tomorrow, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement... It's the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, if you want your dog to tag right along with a gang, if you want him to be strong and husky, don't let him eat just to fill up. Mix his scraps of meat and fat in with Kellogg's Grow Pup Dog Food. Then just see if you don't get congratulations on what a fine dog you have. Grow Pup has what it takes to help keep a dog hitting on all fours. And it's full of swell, meaty flavor dogs like. Besides, there are three different kinds of Grow Pup. Grow Pup Ribbon, Grow Pup Meal, and Grow Pup Pellets. Ask Mother to start feeding your dog Kellogg's Grow Pup today. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.